Hi everyone, my name is Iman and I'm a Level 6 Chartered Manager Degree Apprentice at a tech company. The A-levels that I studied were Biology, Psychology and Geography. I think I applied to around, I want to say like 35 apprenticeships probably. So I didn't really have like any fancy trackers or anything, I literally just jotted each apprenticeship that I applied to on a notepad and then ticked it as I went along, whether I was hearing back from them, getting rejections or if I was on to the next stage or not. I was very much like dead set on going to university. I really wanted to study geography or psychology, preferably at a Russell Group University. And I did do a few taster days where I shadowed a university student for a week. I think it was probably the learning style and the timetable that a university student has. So I sort of went into this lecture room and I sat in the middle. The lecture was just speeding through a PowerPoint presentation. I was trying to like grasp little bits and trying to do as much learning as I can for a sixth form student at uni, but I just wasn't understanding the concept or anything, even when I asked some of the students questions afterwards. I think that was definitely the pivotal moment for me. I would probably have to say my mum and my sister. I have an older sister who went through the apprenticeship process and I did lean on her for advice. Definitely, when I joined as an apprentice in the tech field, when I was speaking to clients and customers, it was mainly men. So I think we definitely need to see more women in tech. I think it's probably the imposter syndrome. When we think of tech companies and we think of tech CEOs, there's not a lot of women in general that we can think of. There's also not a lot of ethnic representation in those industries, so people feel like it's not an attainable goal. And I think that's completely false. So I'd say imposter syndrome for me is feeling like I don't belong somewhere and feeling like I'm not good enough or that I don't know enough information. You definitely need like a support system and you definitely need to speak out about situations that do make you feel like you are suffering from imposter syndrome. I think for me personally, I had a female manager during the start of my apprenticeship and I was sort of able to lean on her for advice. So I think my parents were, they were a little bit concerned, I think just because I was very vocal about studying geography or psychology at university. They were quite supportive once I secured the apprenticeship. My teachers, on the other hand, I would say like my school's career advisor and majority of my A-level teachers didn't really care. I guess it's a basic way to put it. Persevere, keep going. Don't look at what the social norms are. Don't look at what teachers or friends or peers are saying and pick what the best option is for you. So I would say apprenticeship should be the number one choice because you get the best of both worlds. You're learning, you're doing sort of everything a university student will be doing. So you'll get your mentors, you'll get lecturers, you'll get the content that you want to study. But at the same time, you're also getting a salary, you're getting work experience, you're in an environment where it's safe enough for you to make logical mistakes and you can sort of take that experience and grow from it. I would say it's like a mixture of things. So if we have internal campaigns going on, they will definitely like to have early in careers. So a lot of apprentices perspectives and their involvement. So things like National Apprenticeship Week, we've worked with marketing agencies where we've filmed promos. I also get involved in all our social mobility stuff. When I first joined, I started on this Coding Magic program, which was essentially special needs kids in schools. We basically created a whole workshop from scratch, from start to finish. That's definitely been something that I've been quite proud to be a part of. I would say if your school's not being as supportive, definitely reach out like to different organizations online, whether it's success at schools or have a look on LinkedIn, have a look online, just do your research, do a Google search. There's so much 
different resources coming out now, even on LinkedIn. You can connect with like-minded professionals, connect with other apprentices and industries that you're interested in. Don't feel disheartened if your school isn't supporting you. There's definitely some information online or someone online. Honestly, looking back, I have no clue how I deal with the rejections. I was so determined on doing an apprenticeship. For me, I was quite stubborn. Despite getting the first rejection and the second one, just go back, recoup, create a new strategy, and then just go again because I knew apprenticeships were the right choice for me. I sort of see myself, you know, when I was quite confused and in school and didn't know what to do. I think I definitely want to give back in any aspect that I can and whether it's sharing my experiences, doing work experience sessions, I think it's so important to also empower young people into the decision that they make. I would have asked probably what's the best and worst thing about being an apprentice, what the work-life balance is like, and how did you transition from being a student to an apprentice in a company? Hi, my name's Iman and I'm a success at school mentor for the Ask Apprentice community. And I'm here to help you with your apprenticeship questions, anything tech related, and also supporting you with your apprenticeship journey.